What does it mean to be Latino? Is it a shared language? A particularity about food? A love of vivacious pop stars? There are a lot of expectations and stereotypes surrounding Latinx identities today. So let's take a look at the history of the word while dispelling some myths about the ways we should look, act, and define ourselves to figure out what it means to identify as Latino today. On today's agenda, we'll ask, what does it mean to be Latino? Like any umbrella term, living under the big Latino tent comes with pros and cons. While the word seems to unite people beyond racial or national identities, treating Latinos as a homogenous block can erase particular experiences or lend itself to stereotypes. We see this in attempts to monetize and mobilize Latinos in the US. To media companies, wear dollar signs whenever you throw empanada or Selena into your SEO. To Hillary Clinton's campaign, we're needy, unforgiving, and loyal, which probably led her to believe we need another grandmother in our lives. And to Donald Trump's campaign, we are really good at making taco bowls. Like any word, Latino is all about how it's used and who's using it. Who gets to define what Latino means? And where does the word even come from? First, Latino isn't a racial identifier. But when we face discrimination from outside the Latino community, our challenges can intersect with other non-white communities. Cue the racist soccer mom from Colorado. You, you're kind. You're the ones that give the brown people bad name. You want to get something for nothing, but get your ass a job if you don't have one. Because Latin American countries have a convoluted history of colonialism, displacement, and immigration, Latinos come from a variety of racial and national backgrounds. Three to five percent of Peru's population comes from Asian descent, because in the late 1800s, Japanese and Chinese immigrants arrived in the country. Over 30,000 Puerto Ricans live in Hawaii today, because in the early 1900s, laborers were displaced by two hurricanes and economic instability. And yes, there are black Mexicans, but specifying their race on the Mexican census wasn't an option until 2015. To be clear, because identifying as Latino doesn't connote race, racism can and does occur in Latin America. But if Latino isn't a race or nationality, what does it mean? And why do we use such a broad identifying term? Time to put on our colonist cap to better understand how land-grabbing Europeans got us into this shitstorm. While the phrase Latino wasn't coined until the 1940s, Latin America came into popular use in the 1800s, while Americans and French were fighting over, you guessed it, a place people already lived. Mexico was embroiled in a civil war after people rebelled against a French allied leader. The United States saw an opportunity to establish their influence in Mexico using the Monroe Doctrine, but then France clapped back with, Okay, y'all are in the Americas, but honestly, everyone down here is speaking Spanish, which is a Latin-based language and has way more in common with us. So we're just gonna call this Latin America and you can take your doctrine and shove it. So by the 1940s, Latino Americano, or just Latino, became a common identifier for people from Latin America. But then in the 1970s, the US government was like, whoa, we need a way to track the people who aren't white, white, and introduced the term Hispanic into the 1970 census. Even though many in the US have been embracing the term Latino for decades, and it's used more widely today. Why? First, Hispanic came to have a limited definition. Basically, it meant someone whose native language was Spanish, meaning the definition was centered around those who might be foreign born. So while Latino is a trickier term to pin down, it can also encompass Portuguese speaking Brazilians. And some Haitian or Filipino individuals I've met say they also identify as Latino. So it isn't centered around language. In fact, in 2013, about 27% of Latinos said they only speak English at home. I just used a lot of terms. So to clarify, Spanish is a language. When used as an adjective, it describes someone who comes from Spain. A Hispanic person is usually a Spanish speaker or someone who comes from a Spanish speaking country. A Latino or Latinx individual is a person who can trace their heritage to a Latin American country, which by definition is a debatable designation, but that's a whole nother video. And the word is mostly used in the US. So yes, words like Latino are originally the invention of our oppressors. But even if the word was invented to other American residents of non-white or non-European heritage, it's been reclaimed as emblematic of a unified struggle today. As Dolores Huerta pointed out, that unity helped to shape the country we live in today. I've got news for Donald Trump. We have been here all along. We helped build this country and we're still continuing to build this country. We all got lumped together because we looked, sounded, or were foreign. And historically this led to shared experiences for Latinos in the US. The trick is to embrace our unity without erasing our differences. I am Latino, but it's not the only thing I am. I am a man. I'm a queer person, I'm a native Spanish speaker, I'm an American citizen, and I'm a pretty white Puerto Rican of mixed heritage. Some of these things are privileges and some are struggles. None make me any more or less Latino. So here's my advice. Worry less about the word. The beauty of language is that it evolves. So if you identify as Latino, Latina, or Latinx, embrace the messiness of that identity and what it adds to our heritage. Your personhood can't be reduced to a dictionary entry.